Why did Canada really choose the Gripen? The answer isn't as simple as performance charts or glossy brochures. This decision was about geopolitics, budgets, and the future of Canada's defense. On the surface, it might look like just another fighter jet contract, but dig deeper and you'll see it's a bold strategic move that could redefine Canada's role on the global stage. When Canada launched its search for a new fighter under the Future Fighter Capability Project, three contenders stepped into the spotlight. America's F-35 Lightning II, Boeing's Super Hornet, and Sweden's Saab Gripen. Each jet came with its strengths, its promises, and its risks. The F-35 seemed like the obvious choice. A stealth marvel, dripping with high-tech sensors and radar evasion, already embraced by NATO allies. But all that cutting-edge power came with a staggering price tag. Acquisition costs soared, maintenance was complex, and whispers in Ottawa questioned whether Canada really needed a stealth jet designed for global strike missions when most of its tasks revolved around defending home skies, patrolling the Arctic, and upholding NORAD commitments. Then there was Boeing's Super Hornet. Reliable, tested, and cheaper than the F-35. It fit easily into NATO frameworks and would have been a smoother integration for Canadian forces already familiar with older Hornets. But critics argued it was a Band-Aid solution, a jet nearing the end of its era, offering little long-term promise for a country that needed decades of service from its next fighter. And then came the so-called underdog, the Saab Gripen. Smaller, often dismissed in conversations dominated by American giants. But the Gripen had something the others lacked. Balance. It was affordable to buy and to fly, adaptable in Arctic conditions, and packed with advanced electronic warfare capabilities. For Canada's unique geography and budget constraints, that mattered far more than flash. But this wasn't just about aircraft performance. Behind the scenes, Canada was navigating a maze of geopolitics, alliances, and industrial strategy. Choosing a fighter wasn't just about air superiority, it was about sovereignty, independence, and the future of Canada's defense industry. One of the Gripen's strongest cards was cost efficiency. Canada faces the challenge of patrolling one of the largest airspaces in the world. That means jets have to be in the sky frequently, not sitting in hangars because they're too expensive to operate. With the Gripen, Canada could afford more flight hours, better readiness, and steady coverage of its vast territory. But the real surprise came in what Saab offered beyond the aircraft itself. Technology transfer. Local partnerships. A promise that Canada wouldn't just buy jets. It would help build, maintain, and even innovate alongside them. This wasn't just a procurement deal. It was an investment in Canadian industry, jobs, and long-term defense independence. Then, there's the philosophy of the jet itself. The Gripen was never designed to be the flashiest stealth machine. It was designed to be smart, adaptable, and resilient. Its open architecture system means software updates can be rolled out quickly, hardware can be swapped with ease, and the jet can evolve as threats evolve. In an age where cyber warfare, drones, and electronic jamming are rewriting the rules of combat, this flexibility isn't a luxury, it's survival. Canada's northern environment made this choice even clearer. Harsh winters, remote airfields, extreme weather. The Gripen is engineered for quick turnaround times, easy maintenance, and rugged reliability. That adaptability translates directly into operational readiness, ensuring Canadian pilots can respond fast when sovereignty is challenged in the Arctic skies. Strategically, the Gripen also gave Canada something the F-35 could not, independence. With the F-35, every major upgrade, repair, or system tweak would remain tied to U.S. approval. For a country that values sovereignty, that dependence raised red flags. By going with Saab, Canada opened doors to European defense industries, spreading partnerships across the Atlantic, and balancing its reliance on Washington with new alliances. In today's unpredictable geopolitical climate, that diversification is more than symbolic. It's smart insurance. Critics initially thought the Gripen was too small, too modest for Canada's needs. But as Ottawa weighed the costs, the risks, and the long-term goals, the picture changed. The Gripen wasn't the underdog anymore. It was the strategic fit. 
the jet that could patrol the Arctic, plug seamlessly into NORAD, and keep Canada's defense budget under control without sacrificing modern capability. The F-35 wasn't rejected because it was weak, it was rejected because it was impractical. It locked Canada into a path of dependency and cost spirals that didn't match the nation's priorities. The Super Hornet was passed over because it looked backward, not forward. The Gripen, in contrast, aligned with Canada's real mission profile. Defend the homeland, protect the Arctic, honor NATO obligations, and do it all without bankrupting the Treasury. And perhaps the most overlooked factor? The Gripen gives Canada breathing room. With its modular upgrades and open systems, the Royal Canadian Air Force won't be stuck with a frozen design. As technology shifts, artificial intelligence, drone coordination, advanced sensors, the Gripen can absorb those innovations. Canada didn't just buy a fighter jet, it bought a platform that can grow with the times. In the short term, this means more jets in the sky, more patrols, more presence. In the long term, it means freedom. Freedom from single supplier dependency, freedom from unsustainable costs, and freedom to chart a defense future that fits Canada's unique role. When historians look back decades from now, they may call this one of Canada's boldest defense decisions. Choosing not the flashiest or most famous jet, but the one that fit best, the one that balanced capability, cost, independence, and strategy. Canada didn't just choose the Gripen. It chose sovereignty, sustainability, and smart defense for the future. What do you think? Did Canada make the right call? Or should it have gone with another fighter? Share your thoughts below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into strategy and aviation, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next story.